Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson, a reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell whole, the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they shall take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in attaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins gird, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall <clears throat> observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
The epistle is from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, 
One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also, also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one, holy and living God. Amen. Entering into Holy Week this year, I've felt like I've had a sort of theme song quietly playing in the back of my mind on a loop all day, every day. It's a tune from an American folk hymn of the mid-19th century called What Wondrous Love Is This? Perhaps you've heard of it. And I think the simple text from that southern melody, it, it captures pretty much all there is to say about the events that we remember throughout Holy Week and especially those final three days, the Holy Triduum that we begin to observe tonight. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. The hymn asks, and tonight, tonight we meditate on the answer. Tonight, this very night, was the last of Jesus' earthly life. And Jesus knew it. He knew the opposition against him was organizing. He knew that his time was running out. 
So Jesus had to choose carefully and wisely what he was going to say, how he was going to say it, what he was going to do with the fleeting time that remained to him. All he had to work with on that night, on this night, were common, everyday items that were already present with him there in that upper room. No sacred scrolls of Holy Scripture, no brazier of burning incense, no consecrated vessels crafted of silver or gold, no. Just his voice and his body. Just a towel and some water. Just a loaf of bread and a cup of wine. With these simplest of resources, Jesus would have to somehow convey, somehow summarize all that he wanted his followers to remember about him and about his mission on earth. With these plain, ordinary household items, he would somehow have to capture what his story was all about. A story of hope. A story of possibility. A story of love. A story of love, yes, a love story. That is what Jesus would want his followers to remember always. That everything he said and did, everything said and done to him in the past and in the present and in the time before him that was shortening and shortening by every quickening minute, it was all a story of love. And so, Jesus chose to leave his followers with an experience, with a sensation, with a memory drawn from and rooted in perhaps the most primitive experience of feeling loved that every human being around the world shares in all times, in all places. That experience of being fed. Now, in our culture today, with all our vigorous celebrating of independence and and self-reliance, it can be hard for us to admit and acknowledge just how dependent and vulnerable we truly are. But just give it time. Just let us take up a season of fasting, perhaps. And soon, very soon, we realize just how quickly dependence and need and hunger come descending upon us and begin gnawing at the core of our being and and incessantly chewing at the edges of our consciousness. No, it doesn't take that long for us to find ourselves regressing back to infancy. When life consisted not of deadlines and obligations and reputations, but a primal oscillation between the suffering of hunger and the comfort of feeding. But Jesus knew Jesus remembered. So Jesus reached back into those earliest memories that we have all long forgotten. He pulled them back in his own hands, and then he then presented them to us. Take and eat this bread, Jesus said. And remember, take and drink this cup, Jesus said. 
then remember. Remember what it feels like to be fed. Remember what it feels like to be comforted. Remember what it feels like to be loved so much. Such a simple way it was to express the greatest love that the world has ever known. Just a loaf of bread. Just a cup of wine. But that was enough. That would always be enough. Enough for us to eat and to drink and to remember. Remember those first days when our tiny little bodies shook and wailed with discomfort until someone who loved us came to our rescue. Remember how they put something into our mouths and we instinctively swallowed it down into our bellies. Remember then how suddenly the storm was over. And we were okay again. We tasted love on our tongues. And we began to relax again. Because we knew things were going to be all right. Even if the torment of hunger and suffering should come back to us again, we knew. We remembered that care, that love somewhere deep, deep down in our very bodies. But as we grew up, as we got big, life got more complicated, didn't it? We were perfectly content with that motherly manna for a while. But whoa, then along came other options. Then along came pureed peas. And then carrots. And then sweet potato turkey whole grains. We found that we liked some things more than others. We developed preferences in what we would swallow down and what we would spit right back out again. And then we got big. Though we never really grew out of that phase. We still demanded of life a menu full of options that we could choose from. We expected 24-hour availability and immediate service. We, we wanted our way on our terms, at our convenience. A buffet of choices, ready and waiting, always and everywhere. And yet, isn't it something? How the more options we had, the less satisfied we seemed to be. Why? Because eating became more about cravings, more about consumption, and less about love. But here we are tonight. Here we are tonight for a return to the basics, to remember what is truly most important of all. We are here tonight, back in the upper room, with little more than a basin and some water, with some bread and a cup of wine. We are here tonight, leaning on the breast of Jesus, as beloved disciples, as adored children, 
every last one of us, tasting tonight, touching, feeling, remembering with all that we are. What wondrous love is this? Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example. But none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, Blessed are you if you do them. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the end, at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Matthew, Alan, and Mary, our own bishops, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, We pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and people, We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph, our president, Kathleen, our governor, and Joseph, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. for all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy and peace and health. We pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those uh, those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. Yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by the way of God, and by the way of God, 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 by the way of that we may delight in the world, and walk in the place, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Mr. Bonnet. I'll please be seated for just an announcement as we continue on. Um, just a reminder that at the conclusion of our uh, worship this evening, uh, we will have the stripping of the altar, uh, and then you are welcome to stay as long as you like in a, a time of prayer before the uh, stripped altar in the sanctuary. We will then continue on with our Triduum worship tomorrow, Good Friday at noon, with the Liturgy of the Day, um, and then Stations of the Cross at 3 p.m., and then right on through Saturday with Saturday, uh, Holy Saturday prayers at 9 in the morning, and then the Great Vigil of Easter, 7.30 p.m. on Saturday night, and then right on to Easter morning, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and 11. Much still ahead of us as we uh, observe Holy Week here at Grace Church. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, 
we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God. Bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. 